with you at Bonavista Baptist this morning. Welcome to all those who have made it through this snowy morning. Welcome to those online. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we're just going to, we're going to invite some special, some, no, we're not going to invite some special, no. <laughs> we are. We're going to invite you up. It's just true. Some of them are happy to be here, and some of them are not so excited to be here. <laughs> so you may have a seat just for the moment. And let's listen. Jesus. Jesus knew it was time for him to make his last trip to Jerusalem. As he and his disciples came to a vill village at the Mount of Olives, just outside the city, Jesus called two of them to him. Go over to the village. You will find there the colt of a donkey, tied up outside a door. Untie it and bring it to me. What if the owner, co what if the owner of the colt asks what we are doing? Ask one of them. If that happens, just tell him the Lord needs it, said Jesus. The two men did as Jesus instructed them. Then they spread some clothes over its back to make kind of a saddle. Jesus climbed up and they set off for the city of Jerusalem. The people had heard that Jesus was on his way and crowded the streets. Some threw their cloaks on the ground in front of him. Some caught branch cut branches off the palm trees and waved them about. Everyone was shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They were all very excited to see Jesus and praise him.
awesome. I would like to dismiss our awesome children. Can you give her a round of applause again? It took a lot of courage to come up here. Let's do whatever you want. Okay. Oh, they want to stay. Well done, Jane. Thanks, kids. I would like to ask the ushers to come forward when you can. And I want to pray over our children and our youth and our leaders, and I'll pray for the offering. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for all of the amazing children that you have blessed us, or blessed our church with, Lord. We thank you for their smiling faces, for their open hearts, for the desire to learn more about you. Lord, we pray for them and we pray for their families as these children are raised and brought up to know and love you and to serve you, Lord. We thank you for all those who are walking beside them as teachers and volunteers to cultivate that faith to cultivate that love for you. And Lord, I thank you for this offering this morning, especially as we celebrate Palm Sunday and look forward to your son's resurrection, Lord. We think of that sacrifice and how monumental it is. And Lord, I just ask that you accept these humbling, humble offerings that we give you and they can be used to show your love throughout our world. Amen.
be seated. Morning, DVC. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today and the opportunity to come together as your church to hear your word and worship you. Thank you for being a holy and gracious God. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, to die for the sins of mankind. And thank you for the covering that Jesus provides us through his sacrifice that we may be sanctified through his blood and reunited to you, our Holy Father. Dear God, I pray for your church here at BBC and worldwide. I lift all our brothers and sisters in Christ to you, that you may bless and protect our lives, our families, provide for our needs, whether physical or mental. I pray for your joy and peace to permeate our souls as we walk out our faith by your Holy Spirit. I ask for your wisdom to guide us and help us to grow and mature as we seek you with our whole hearts and minds. Dear Lord, I pray for those who are being persecuted for their faith, that you would draw near to them, give comfort and strength as they face these trials and embolden them to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ so that all may be saved. Your word promises, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. I pray that blessing over all your church and for the strength to stand the test and persevere. Lord, I pray for all those who are in a position of leadership in our world. I pray that they will seek you first with their whole heart. I ask for your holy wisdom to guide them in truth and strengthen them to lead fairly, responsibly, and with humility. We know that all authority that has been given was established by you, and those in authority are your servant for our good. Heavenly God, I pray for the lost, the lonely, the hurting, the weak, the mourning, the desperate, the poor, the deceived, the proud and disobedient, the oppressed, the innocent and guilty. We all need you, Lord, and are lost without you. Your word says that we will find you if we seek you with all our hearts and with all our soul. As we prepare to reflect on your death and celebrate your resurrection this upcoming Easter weekend, prepare our hearts to, to turn to Jesus. Guide Pastor Samuel as he delivers your word and opens our heart to receive the word as seed that falls on good soil to produce crops a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. In Jesus' name, amen. guys looking at me okay <laughs> good morning it's really white bright outside but you guys brave enough to come this morning to 
house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glad to see you, everyone. Okay, as we know, today is a Palm Sunday, right? The Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Easter that begins the Holy Week. It is the day that we remember and celebrate the day Jesus entered Jerusalem as a Savior and King. As Jesus rode a donkey into the town of Jerusalem, a large crowd gathered and laid palm branches and their clocks across the road, giving Jesus royal treatment. The hundred of people shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Writer Debbie McDaniel wrote about the significance of Palm Sunday. She said, on the hills of Palm Sunday, as we begin this Holy Week, may we constantly be remi- reminded of its significance and value for our lives today. That very important day in history when Jesus began his journey toward the cross. Yet maybe in the midst of busy lives, on the heels of spring break, or in all of the coming thoughts about Easter, the real meaning of it may even unintentionally get missed. His word reveals such great truths in every part of this story, truths that draw us close toward Christ, reminding us that he alone is king. Amen. Amen. I think we can find the sins of Jesus entering Jerusalem in all four Gospels. Although the records before and after Jesus entering into Jerusalem are slightly different, It is certain that all gospel writers considered this event to be very important. Last year on Palm Sunday, I gave a sermon titled, (laughs) Oh, don't you remember that one? What was my sermon title last Palm Sunday? (laughs) Good try. Yeah, because of, I, I, I thought about that, and since I almost tempted like that, why don't I do the same sermon this year again? <laughs> I don't think anyone can recognize it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, the last year on Farm Sunday, I gave a sermon titled Seeing Jesus based on Mark chapter 11. This year on Palm Sunday, which is today, I'm going to preach from the John chapter 12. Apostle John was an apostle who lived for quite a long time, despite numerous hardships, witnessed all the walks of Christ and the walks of the Holy Spirit through the early church. And he died with an almost complete understanding of what Christ taught his disciples through those journeys. So the Gospel of John speaks in in a slight different tone from the other Gospels. Now we are going to read today's scriptures. Gospel John chapter 12, verse 12 to 19. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the the way to Jerusalem, swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, praise God, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that says, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples did understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus, 
from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, there's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. Amen. So before the scene of Jesus' enter, entry into Jerusalem that we have just read, there are records of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and Jesus being anointed in Bethany. In verse 17, Apostle John once again mentions the instant in which Jesus raised raised Lazarus from the dead. And he says that large crowds gathered here because they heard about this miraculous sign of Lazarus. We are reading the Bible, right? You are reading the Bible? Yeah, I'm sure. Even though we don't have any plan to read together, still you are reading the Bible. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I want to check. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. We are reading the Bible from the author's point of view in the third person omniscient. Do you know what that is? I'm sure you guys' English is way better than me. <laughs> so you knew that. What's the, this, what is this? So we, we're reading the Bible from the author's point of view in the third person omniscient. That means we are reading the Bible from the top to bottom. So we look at everything. Because we can read this scripture from that perspective, we know, we know that the reason Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey was to fulfill an Old Testament prophecy and die on the cross and be resurrected according to God's plan. But in verse 16, Apostle Apostle John says that Jesus' disciples did not understand at the time. They didn't understand at the time. And he's saying that after Jesus entered into his glory, finally they remembered and they realized. Naturally, not only Jesus' disciples, but also the crowds there did not understand the exact reason why Jesus entered Jerusalem. As Apostle John said, they gathered because they saw a miraculous sign from Jesus, and they hope for other miracles they wanted to see right now. As we know, the crowds were chanting for Jesus, waving palm branches in their hands because that was the expression of their desires about the miracle they want to see now. Victory is represented by the palm tree. For this reason, the people in the account of Jesus' arrival used palm branches to celebrate his arrival. This certain act has a rich cultural and historical background for the Jews. Their ancestors also used these leaves for celebration. So the palm branch marks a triumph for the people of Israel. They are hoping that Jesus, who has already shown many miraculous signs, especially the miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead, will now perform a miracle that will liberate them from Roman oppression and restore complete independence and the glory of Zion. At this point, let, let's think about the Apostle John for himself for a moment. As you know, he is the author of this gospel, right? I think so. You're not sure? The Pastor Scott will explain next time. <laughs> he is the author of the gospel, John. And he wrote that Jesus' disciples did not understand at the time, but only understood all these things later after all of Jesus' ministry had been success- successfully completed. But if you think about it carefully, Apostle John himself was one of the disciples of Jesus he's talking about now. 
He was recording this situation from the third person, a third point of view. But perhaps he was telling his own story. He told us like that he is talking about his Jesus disciple, but actually, he's telling us his own story. Apostle John was the person who experienced Jesus most closely. He was a person who saw more miraculous signs of Jesus than anyone else and was in a special position to sometimes even hear explanations given by Jesus. All of this gave him bigger dreams and ambitions. Jesus taught countless times about his ministry and why he came to earth. But instead of trying to understand the teachings, the Apostle John furthered his own desires because he saw numerous miraculous signs of Jesus. Just before Jesus came to Jerusalem, he even asked Jesus through his mother for a miracle he wanted to happen in his life. We believe that it is a miracle to be able to have something that we cannot have within our own abilities. Right? Especially when we get something or a situation that someone else has without any effort on our part, we think of it as a miracle. Isn't that right? As Christians, we read in the Bible about the many miracles Jesus performed, and we believe them to be true. But what we need to be clear about here is, aren't we, like the Apostle John, or like the crowd we met in John chapter 12, aren't we waving palm branches today and asking Jesus for the miracle we hope for. At the end of the Gospel of John, he come across the truth that the Apostle John finally came to realize. Jesus did not show any miraculous signs after his entry into Jerusalem. And he did not perform any miracles even on the cross when he most need miracles for himself. Jesus died on the cross, was taken to the tomb, and remained there in his dead body for three days. And as we know, Jesus was resurrected. Jesus did not perform miracles for himself, but he became a miracle himself. In John chapter 20 and verse 30 and 31st says, the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. First John chapter 5, verse 20, Apostle John keeps saying, And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we can know the true God. And now we live in fellowship with the true God because we live in fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God, and he is eternal life. I believe he finally understood what true miracle is. Just as Jesus called the Apostle John to be his disciples, I believe he calls us to be his disciple right now. A disciple is someone who tries to be just like his teacher. A disciple is a person who tries to be completely resemble his teacher. 
Jesus, who is God, came to this earth in human form, did not reject death, but died on the cross and was resurrected to give us new life. He himself became a miracle to us, and he made us miracles for his ministry on earth. I strongly believe you are the miracle God gave to the world. Do you believe it? Do you agree with this? Looks like you're not. <laughs> so I want to do some little bit things like I, if I'm a youth pastor or a young adult pastor. Right end. Everyone, right end. And Samuel, you are the miracle God gave to the world. Would you do that? <laughs> Call your name. No, don't, don't, don't call Samuel. I'm doing by myself. <laughs> call your name. So, Samuel, you're the miracle God gave to the world. Amen. Amen. That is why we should not be people chasing another miraculous sign, but rather live a life as a miracle itself. People in the world must be able to meet God through us. The miracle of them becoming disciples of Jesus must happen through us. We can encounter the lives of the disciples who understood Jesus' ministry in the book of Acts. Their life, as it appeared, was far from the miracles they had expected in the past. Rather, on the surface, it was a life that required a lot of suffering and sacrifice. However, because they lived miraculous lives like Jesus, we were able to meet Jesus Christ today. We were able to receive the new and eternal life. This morning, all children waved palm branches and praised the Lord at the beginning of the service, right? I think all of you would have waved palm branches together in your hearts, did you? With what thoughts did you shake the palm branches? Did you shake palm branches in your heart hoping that the Lord will bring the miracle you desire into your life? Or, like Jesus, who himself became a miracle to save the world and God's plan, did you shake palm branch with the determination to live a life that becomes a miraculous sign to the world as Jesus' disciples? I'd like to end today's sermon by introducing you to a line from the movie, Frank vs. God. This quote is an answer given by a pastor after receiving a question from a lawyer in court about God giving suffering to humans. He said, I ask for strength and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom, and God gave me problems to learn to solve. I asked for courage, and God gave me dangers to overcome. And I asked for love, and God gave me troubled people to help. My prayers were answered. I think this is the miracle. Let's pray together.
Dear Lord, we give you thanks for your good and your mercy is endless. Turn our eyes now to the one who comes in your name, the one who opens the gates of righteousness, the one who answers when we call. Lord, open our eyes that we may see you coming and may praise you with a pure heart and may walk in the way of your suffering and share also in your resurrection. Help us to live our lives that can be a miracles to the world as you are to us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Samuel. So please join us as we uh, close with this last song. It is new, but it is simple. So uh, it will end our, our time of celebration and our Hosanna songs this morning. So please stand. Jesus.
saves us, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, heroes from the grave. Shout and lift him up, Hosanna. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saves. Shout, Hosanna, heroes from the grave. so much to Robin and the team for leading us in worship and to Jane and her team for including the kids it was great to see that and thank you Pastor Samuel for your insights this morning thank you this is an important week in the life of our congregation and the church worldwide as we celebrate Holy Week we have a number of things we want to invite you to Thursday night Linda Ferguson, her small group, they're doing a tenebrae service. It's an evening service, and it'll be here at 7 p.m. if you want to join with that. We also have our Good Friday service, and we're combining with Altador Church and Emmanuel Baptist Church. Be here Friday, 10 a.m. We'll be having communion together. And then on Sunday, we have Easter, Resurrection Sunday at 10 a.m. and uh, we encourage you to bring family and friends and come and celebrate all of that together. If you'd like prayer this morning, there will be an elder at the front or I encourage you to pray with one another. Otherwise, coffee is served and we can encourage one another over a cup of coffee. Well, now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.